Just look at that, guys. This is a place we haven't been in a while. We are in the Whitefish Chain of Lakes. Now this is a serious body of water. Much like Gull Lake Chain. It's massive. Lots of resorts, lots of places to fish and ski. I always do that to kind of snugs it up better. I decided to take the passenger seat out. You know why? Because I never have a passenger. <laughs> yep. So I got more room. Somebody's getting towed in. That really sucks. Been there, done that. Lady at the uh, public access waiting on them with the trailer. Oh, that's a big, expensive boat, too. I guess they break down, too. Twin 300 Mercuries on the back of that boat. And he's being towed in with a 200 some plus thousand dollar Mastercraft.
there's a sign on the bridge here for a pig roast the second Saturday of August that's oh, a fisherman coming to the bridge restaurant here. I forget the name of it. But I know they have good and reasonably priced food. That I do know. Or else I would have never eaten there. But it's really nice. You know, french fries, burgers, sandwiches, things like that. They're just in a fancy building. real careful up here and stay inside the channel markers because there's a lot of hazards it's a big lake although the water levels seem to be up hey that's kind of cool they got themselves a little makeshift uh, playground right there between the docks the sliding sliding bolt board there see all these channel markers here it can get confusing size of that perch. That's the first perch I've caught this year. Nice big one. I'm keeping that. I just I just kind of picked a lake. There's like, I don't know, a bunch of them up here. And I'm in Pig Lake right now in the Whitefish Chain of Lakes, just kind of floating around using different baits and stuff like I don't have any live bait. I'm just enjoying life look at they got a volleyball court this private landowner has a big volleyball court set up it's badass and there's footprints in the sand like it's being used let me show you you know Caught it. Yeah, finally caught one. I lost a big fish. 
Yes, I did. Broke my line. Time to move on. There's uh, a couple of uh, hazard markers here right out in the middle of nowhere. So I think I'm going to fish around them. Why not, right? Look at this. Heck yeah. This is a uh, trout lake over here. It's also part of the whitefish chain. Just absolutely beautiful. Everybody on this lake is flying a Gadsden flag. <laughs> it's all these terrorists, right? FBI says that flag, you know, could be representative of domestic terrorism, but there's a lot of them. And oh, look, terrorist fishermen, I guess. I don't know. Look at this setup here. He's got four jet skis, four boats. It's awesome. Awesome as shit. That's a uh, some kind of a youth camp.
This is the Whitefish Chain of Lakes Trout Lake Public Access. Just for a frame of reference. It's awesome. I do a little fishing around here. Just a little. I'm not so much fishing today as I am just relaxing, floating around, looking at shit. Crap! Will you look at that? Although at this rate, the, the Republicans may screw themselves out of a Senate majority, so McConnell may get me off the hook. Again. Look at that. Okay, just for the record, this is on Trout Lake, in the Whitefish Chain of Lakes. Look at that. Whoa! That's a big old bass. Another one. I could literally stay out here all day long. Literally stay out here all day long. I got this old plastic bait. I think I got it at Walmart <laughs> 20 years ago or something. This is what I caught the perch on. I just, you know, sometimes even at the, even if you know it doesn't catch fish, you just want to keep trying it because you paid money for it, right? This was like 50 cents or something, right? Then I had a couple of those sight unseen things, you know, where you can't see it, but I can. Of some uh, pretty giant northern followers. You know, they, they, they'd say that a lot in the musky fishing industry. You know, well, you had a follower and that's why you do the little figure eight at the boat. They had a lot of followers with that. Didn't catch any of them though. Which is pretty much pretty much what the musky guys say all the time too. <laughs> Didn't catch any though. Yeah. 
I think this this trout lake is like the deepest lake. It's a couple of hundred feet deep here. I, I'm not, don't quote me on it, but I'm off the top of my head. I know there's lake trout in this lake. And there's, when you see someone with, with down riggers on their boat in Minnesota, yeah, they're set up for lake trout. And I've seen a few guys, you know, with that setup. Downriggers, you know, for those of you that don't fish, those are like little poles that hang off the side of your boat that you, you troll your line, your fishing line with, and it's got a really big weight that keeps the, the bait down like a hundred or two hundred feet. You have to go back and forth like 300 times you know, a day, and then maybe within a month you'll catch a big lake trout if you're lucky. Yeah, that's why I don't lake trout fish. But there's some diehards out here. They, there, there is. You know what? If I actually was a multi-millionaire and could afford to live on this lake. And you could walk out to your dock every day and just go. Yeah, I'd probably do it too. I, I'd probably try to catch the biggest fish I possibly could, and that would be lake trout. There's a big lunch crowd now. That's a big unicorn. Lemonade stand, 25 cents. It's closed right now though. That is a brilliant entrepreneur right there. Except I would charge a dollar. Yeah, this is rich country here. You, you can get a dollar. Especially if you let them bounce on your unicorn, right? I don't want to go home.
but I'm gonna fish a little bit. There's a little island out here where those boats are. It's kind of a sunken island. And usually they put up flags and stuff like that around it, like the moon landing. And I don't think it's marked very well, but this is one of those ginormous bodies of water that they do a better job at marking hazards a lot better job of marking hazards because it's a real popular tourist destination there's a lot of resorts and a lot of money let's just say which is awesome too and they you know when you have these lake associations for people that live on this lake that's what they call them, lake associations and stuff like that. They pay a certain amount. They, they pay a fee, you know, like an association free fee, like you would in, uh, if you're bought into that kind of neighborhood thing, only they pay the big bucks. I think it's voluntary, but they all pay it because they get, it's like a giant union, you know, they get their say so, so. If they keep running aground in a certain place, well, they'll just uh, make sure it gets marked. And I understand why, because you certainly don't want your customers running aground. Right where that marker is, is the sunken island and where those boats are kind of anchored around there, I think. Yeah, they're swimming right there. So we'll go home under that bridge. But right now I'm going to come over here and do a little bit more fishing. See, look at that, the size of that house right there. It's probably about 200,000 square foot. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Glad I went when I did. See, there's a lineup of boats there now. There's a lineup. And it, it, it wasn't because of me. The reason there's a lineup is they have what I call them the weed inspectors. I don't know what the hell they are. They, these people, in, they, they wear their yellow vests and they, they, They start, now it's Monday. There's, this is a sore subject with me. I always treat these people that work these docks with the utmost respect, patience, and kindness. I do, I just do. Because they just, they just need the money or they don't know any better. I don't know what it is, but. You probably can't see it from here, but there's a woman my age, you know, she's got the yellow hat, the yellow vest on, and she's walking around every boat. 
When's the last time you had your boat in the lake? Where are you going? How long you plan on staying? What's the next lake you're going to? Blah, blah, blah. And they go on and on and on and on with this questionnaire. On Monday, it used to be like once a month on the weekend. Then it went to like twice a month on the weekend. Then it went to like every weekend. And now it's every day on every access, it seems. It seems. Although I haven't, this is kind of like the first and it's here, it's August for me though, but I haven't been going to any real popular lakes. I don't know what the deal is with them, but they, they ask all these questions and there is 3,000 accesses to this lake to get on this Whitefish Channel Lake. They're, they're everywhere, every resort has one. A lot of the property owners have them. They're just, you could never ever control it. Well, I, I guess, you know, they'll try but they they set up at the accesses and they they just inconvenience people you know and they ask all these intrusive i think intrusive questions i always just say i don't answer questions and to her credit she's like yeah okay and she left me be and that's the way it should be and she's obviously a very smart lady let's just say but the, these inspectors, or whatever they are, they, they grow in numbers, they grow in numbers, they grow in numbers, they back up the accesses. And, you know, when I first moved here, there was no such thing as them. And then you just watch them grow. Every one of them's paid. And there's not really, I don't see, I don't know. Everyone has a different opinion on this. Most of the people I hang out with agree with me. It's just more government, more intrusion. It's just a matter of time till they're starting to hand out tickets because, you know, there was a drop of water on your boat that shouldn't have been there. So that's it. Look. Never mind. It's just frustrating to me that you can sit and watch this useless i think this is my opinion this is my opinion everyone will say well don't you like the environment you want to spread disease do you want to spread how, how do we get by the last 200 years without these people i'll never know but see like right here's an access here's an access oh i don't see anybody checking your boat there <laughs> Uh, you know, people will say, well, it's an education method. That way, if you have any questions, these people are here to answer them about, you know, uh, noxious weeds or weed, milfoil or, or curly weed pond or all these things that, that can get on your boat and you could, you know, transfer this to other lakes and pollute other lakes with this stuff because you don't know any better you didn't drain the water out of your boat or you didn't put the plug out pull the plug out of your boat which is a hundred dollar fine my neighbor got a ticket for that not having a plug having a plug in his boat when he shouldn't have it's just so chicken shit to me it's just so chicken shit it's just never mind love you guys <laughs> see you later